your recording. Welcome to the July Ag Communication webinar. We're glad to have you here. This is, I think, the biggest crowd we've had on one of these maybe. And I've already had three emails today of people asking for notes or the recording or something like that. So that's why I said, oh, I have to remember to record. Plus a big thank you to Ellen for taking some notes. I'm Becky Koch. I'm the Ag Communication Director and... I'm Sharon Lane and I'm with the Distribution Center and I've been there for probably since the building was built, so a pretty long time, so. Not works. quite, <laughs> <laughs> but we are very glad to have you on today. We've had some discussions here recently, both within AgCom about extension publications and with some others, so we thought this is a great idea to just share some of the processes with all the rest of you and to get your feedback. So we will take it away and we're going to try a little bit of everything using Skype. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to share my desktop to show you what we call the Educational Materials website. Can you all see the AgCom homepage now? Great, thank you. And I have to go back to check that. So from the Ag Communication homepage, over in the left navigation, there's educational materials. I remember years ago we d discussed, okay, is this publications, do we just title it publications, but yet educational materials are more than publications. What we're going to talk about today is basically publications, but other things fall under this process too. So if that's confusing to you, that's why we call it educational materials, because it is more than publications. So some of you who are authors hopefully have already found this website. We've laid out the process pretty well and reviewed it and updated it many times over the last few years. So I encourage you, especially if you're an author, to review this website. For example, information about the sponsorship acknowledgement guidelines. If an organization helps pay for the development of a publication, how to appropriately and consistently acknowledge them so we're all doing it the same way. The submittal form, the submittal form, we can't emphasize enough how important that is, right, Sharon? That's right. Because that helps us keep track of things through the entire process of that publication. Notice it says everything goes directly to Sharon first. Please, please, please do not take it to Ellen for editing first. Do not take it directly to somebody in graphics. Take it to Sharon, your text, and graphics and the submittal form and Sharon will make sure all the pieces that we need are there and she'll start it through the process and then everybody through the process is responsible for putting on the publications tracking log where that publication is in the process. So we need your information on that submittal form, not just so we can keep track of it, but so you help us with some things like a marketing description even. So when that publication is done, and we say publication and think printed, but a lot of our publications are accessed online too. So we need that marketing blurb so Sharon can put that on the landing page or we can use it for social media or whatever. So wanted to make sure you knew about the educational materials website and the steps that you go through. So I'm going to stop presenting that and go back to our generic Skype page and see if there are any questions yet about what you saw Maybe you, it was too small to see on my screen, but maybe you clicked on it while we were there. Are there any questions about the process, really, of just where you start? That's the main thing I say. Go to Sharon. <laughs> She'll head you in the right direction. And it's really important, too, to have that. I know it seems like it's kind of a nuisance sometimes, but it's important to have that submittal form because there it tells us whether you're going to go just strictly web or whether you want printed copies, how many printed copies you're going to be. And as Becky mentioned before, 
Um, it gives me a little blurb to do a landing page, so we have a description there, so we have it in your words, not mine, uh, because obviously you know you know what how it should be phrased a lot better than I would. Uh, it tells us funding sources and any kind of information that we've got that way. So it really is pretty important, and then, then uh, it gets assigned a number when it comes to me, and then it goes on to editing, and then from editing it goes on into the graphics and print center or wherever it ends up so and it's uh, for newsletters for publications for um, presentations very often too it will get uh, information there for us to follow through mm -hmm. great thanks Sharon sure okay if there are no questions there we're going to go ahead and kind of walk through the questions that we put in the marketing piece for this that I assume you're on because you want these questions answered. So first of all, the biggie that we've been getting here are why are publications older than five years no longer available? The program leaders two or three years ago oh, at least, yeah. talked about how if we are to be seen as an up-to-date relevant organization we need to make sure our materials are relevant and up-to-date and that means they have to have a fairly recent date on them think about it five years ago from right now was 2011 to most of us that's like ancient history anymore if you see something with 2011 on it you may automatically think Ugh, that sounds a little old I don't know about that even if the information is still 100% accurate, Sharon will send you an email and say, okay, five years is up, usually with about a six month warning. We're trying to get on a better schedule there. Yeah, let's try. <laughs> We're trying for that. So this is our plan. Yes. Too, and this is what we want to do. Yes. So if you're an author, you'll get a six month warning that you need to review that publication. If absolutely nothing changes you let Sharon know she may still request a submittal form or it may be so simple that all we have to do is quick put a new date on it which we'll talk about here in a minute and you're good to go but we do want you to at least review it every five years canning is always the best example mm -hmm. things change there majorly when everything changed from my pyramid to my plate. So there are changes in that time. So we want to make sure we're giving our customers the most up-to-date information and we can only do that by having you review that at least every five years. And then we want to make sure our things show that it's been reviewed and updated in that time, which we'll get to as soon as we answer Linda's question. Linda, I don't have that page open anymore, but that is specifically mentioned in the educational materials guidelines. We've had to deal with the process if the original author is no longer at NDSU. What we do, do you want to explain it or do I think I know what it is? Well, I think you probably know <laughs> no, well, it. But <laughs> what we generally do is to go with whoever has been done the replacement or another person in that department. For instance, if somebody in animal science is no longer there, then we'll go to the new specialist or we'll go to the department head uh, or program leader for a suggestion as to who we should go to to have it reprinted or redone. Um, Many times, like Becky said, the information is still relevant, but we still need to get an updated contact person's name on there, if nothing else. So, And Deb Gebke especially has been good at thinking through this process. And I can think of one example, it goes from way back, but Laura DeHaan authored something, How to Talk to Children About Something, and we certainly still wanted to give her credit. She's at another university now, I think, and she was the original author. So on the back page is where we put originally written by, in this case it was Laura DeHaan. Mm -hmm. However, since Sean Brotherson is the current contact, his name is on the front. And I know a few of our specialists felt uncomfortable with that, but it doesn't necessarily say you're the author, since the author is credited on the back, the original author, but you are now the contact with right. that subject matter information with the NDSU Extension Service. So kind of a long answer to that, Linda, but yes, we've thought through that and that is written out, so we are doing that consistently. 
So the five years are longer, that's the process that we really want to make sure we're looking up to date and relevant and just making sure our information is still up to date and relevant for our customers. Now, some of you have also asked, but I Googled and I found this really old publication. <laughs> well, you know what? We did too here a while back and we finally figured out what was going on. There had been an old folder within the web system that we hadn't really known about. And so there are right now a bunch. Oh, it was yes. a long list. Yes, very much so. <laughs> of really old publications that were still out there. They didn't have landing pages, they didn't have links, but if you searched, you could find them. So some of you, mostly authors, so maybe not too many of you on this call, probably got an email from Elizabeth right. about a month and a half ago that said, hmm, we just found these. <laughs> Would you look through this list and tell us if they're so old they should just be taken off or if you want to update them or exactly what the deal is. So we gave everybody an August 1 deadline and I know Elizabeth sent out the reminders mm -hmm. here just a few days ago, in fact, I think. So this time we promise we will get those really old ones off the web now that we've discovered where they are. So wanted to share that with you. Any questions about that? We need to practice what we preach and provide our customers with the most up-to-date relevant information and obviously they were finding some out-of-date stuff. And occasionally we'll find or be notified of something that somebody has referenced it or have downloaded or copied it onto their web page so it's still out there even though we don't have it here so if you find something like that that's really out of date please let us know so that we can go through the process of getting it updated or off the information so we certainly don't want to give any incorrect information when it comes to chemicals or food safety or anything like that so in addition to it just being old, I would echo what Sharon just said and say never, never, never copy a publication and put it on your own website because that simply dilutes our search engine optimization. So you should always link to the master copy on the publication's website. Just today I sent an email to a county and politely said, this is the old one. If you would link to the new one, you wouldn't have the old one up. So you might think you're getting more people to see the publication, where actually it's just the opposite. If you link to the master on the publication's webpage, number one, you will always be linked to the most up-to-date information right. because right. we don't change the URLs when there's right. an update. Exactly and you will actually increase the search engine optimization. In fact, I challenge you to link because Google measures links to increase SEO. So please do not duplicate publications on your own website. Any questions about that? Does it make sense? A lot of people have said, oh, that sounds backwards, but avoiding duplication is what gets you more Google juice. So just thought we'd add that while we were talking about publications online. Any questions so far? This is supposed to be a discussion. That means two-way, <laughs> not just between Sharon and me. No questions? Okay, we're going to keep rolling then. Okay, Sharon's going to take the lead here on what's the difference when a publication says revised or reprinted or whatever. And this is where our coordination is going to be interesting because Sharon will yes. try to hold the publication up close to show you. So you will have to be sure to tell me whether you can see what I'm doing or not because most of the time I don't know what I'm doing so we'll oh, see yeah. if we can make this work. Now this is a publication that has just come out and it is uh, on pollination gardening and it is a brand new publication. So on the bottom I can't zoom in anymore. Whoopsie. On the bottom it's got the date of June 2016. I don't know, can everybody see that? It may not be in the greatest focus, but especially if I'm shaking. <laughs> so the new ones the new ones come out and the, the publication uh, date is always on the bottom. The uh, publication number is always on the top up in this area. Oh, there we go. Okay. So the date is right down here. 
and that's a beautiful new one beautiful beautiful <laughs> landscaping so that's a brand new one then when we have something like this one that Dave Franson has done he has done a revision so next to the title or next to the number excuse me it's got the the word revision so that'll tell you that it is something that has been revised occasionally it'll be also on the bottom now another interesting thing if you are ever curious and can read small print on the back of the publications we have got a listing of how many were printed in how many years and that usually is every time it's been reprinted we add another another uh, code on there as to what the year was and how many were printed when we have something that is just as Becky we talked about earlier that everything's just great every all the information is correct and so then they go through it and then we have it and it says revised or reviewed rather and reprinted and this just means that it's got a new date on it the information if you've got a 2012 one the information is exactly the same it's just that in 2015 as this one was it was reviewed and reprinted at that point so that'll give us an idea so those are the differences between the revisions the reviews and then the brand new ones any oh I'm sorry it's blurry okay can you see it I think all? I think the camera is kind of all oh. in and out so certainly it wouldn't be me it must be the camera okay <laughs> so if you have any questions we can go over that you can give me a call or something and we'll certainly go over that and just to clarify when it's revised it's the year it's revised and right. so where would the original year be uh, the original year usually is printed in the back uh, on this one here where it says revised or reviewed rather it says here that the um, it was done publication was authored by such and such in years ago and it was in 2001 so that generally is on the back any kind of uh, mention of the previous author and date so any questions about that we met with some folks three weeks ago or so who had questions about it so we thought hmm other people might have mm -hmm. questions about that mm -hmm. so reviewed reprinted revised it's kind of confusing they all start with R but they do <laughs> but you think about what the words mean so any questions about that process? You guys are a lot easier than I thought you might be today. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, so the next question... Oh, we already talked about the dates on the front and the back, mm -hmm. so I'm we're sorry, good there. I no, missed. no, okay. you covered it. I just had my arrow. Uh, the next question was, how do we know if we have the latest version of the publication? What do you recommend? I know what I recommend, but what do you recommend? I Karen? would recommend going to the web and looking for the uh, version on, on the web. Okay. Do, do you have a different answer? No, nope. same <laughs> answer. Same answer. Um, I am a firm believer in search. And this is not totally related to publications, but I'm going to share this little tidbit anyway. The, the Google custom search on all of our ag pages is exactly that a Google custom search that is set up to search all of the ag servers so if you know you want information about herbicide drift it's a lot faster to just go to search and type in as specific of a description as you can herbicide drift and chances are that publication will come right to you instead of going through navigation. I'll tell you, I very, 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 very blah, rarely use navigation anymore. Search is so good and so fast, and I'm lazy. So just now you have to be as specific as you possibly can, but I encourage you to search instead of using navigation. Yeah, we still use navigation, and <clears throat> some of us of a certain age, just kind of grew up with navigation before decent search. So we want to navigate through and we get frustrated when we have to go through so many clicks. According to the latest research I saw, something like 80% of information is found via search. Bob Birch, I know, has specifics from our ag websites and I don't remember the data, but it was pretty high also. People find information via search. So that's 
I'm reinforcing what you're right. saying, Sharon, about go to the website because the latest one, especially after we get those really old ones off, right. <laughs> right. the latest one will be what is on the web. So you can compare that with what's on your shelf or in your file cabinet or whatever to make sure you have the latest version. And if you have any questions, be sure to give me a call because occasionally things do kind of slip through the cracks. And so sometimes things get posted and then uh, or, or revised, and then I, the new PDF isn't posted. So please let me know. It's it's very easy fix, and and I appreciate knowing those things. So thank you. Super. Any questions about that? Okay, we're going to change gears a little bit here. Uh, let's see if you all can take a vote or or mark for me a hands up with the little icons in the very bottom. How many of you have a smartphone and get information on your smartphone? Just see if you can do a thumbs up with your icons at the bottom. I'm just challenging you here. <laughs> there, Ryan's oh, got a thumbs go. up. He gets info on his smartphone. There, oh, quite a few of everybody. you. Yeah, awesome. Everybody. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Too many icons to play with, apparently. Okay. Has any, this is a specific because it's our extreme example. Have any of you tried to look at variety trials on your smartphone? That one is a pain in the rear because it's a lot of tape. Well, in fact, any of our PDF publications mm -hmm. because PDFs are very difficult to read on a smartphone or even a tablet. So we are in the process here in AgCom of converting all of our, or at least the vast majority, we don't know what to do yet with variety trials and some of those, mm -hmm. but we're in the process of switching or adding, I should say, mm -hmm. because the PDF still will be available because we know sometimes you want it printed out, but we're trying to get everything into Ag CMS in addition to PDF so it will be responsive on smartphones and tablets. Okay, just a sec, Don, and we'll get to that one. So so that's what we're it's a big process, it let me is. tell you. We, Sounds pretty easy, but it's <laughs> it's been big. First of all, any guesses on how many numbered publications we have live? Not the old ones that we didn't realize weren't supposed to be live, but truly live extension numbered publications. Type in some numbers. How many do you think we have? This is supposed to be interactive. Nobody will laugh because I was way off. Nobody's even going to guess. Well, we have a lot of them. <laughs> More than 750. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Carl! Oh, awesome! <laughs> Not quite. You better get to writing, Carl. <laughs> uh, we have more than 750 numbered publications, and to be honest, that was after a big clean out. Oh, absolutely. So, so we're really impressed, but more than 750 publications. And for every one of those, we have to work with the graphic designers to pull out the graphics and then decide if we're going to include all the graphics in the Ag CMS version because some of them that just are kind of pretty but don't add to the content, do you really want to use up your data on something like that? You probably want to get to the guts of it on your phone. So we're in the, I won't even say middle, but we're rolling We are <laughs> on we that are. big project and we'll keep working on that. So that is a big, big project, but we are trying to um, have that available for smartphones and tablets and what, the biggest change will be is eventually there won't be a separate landing page. You'll go straight, and correct me if I'm saying anything wrong, Sharon, you'll go straight to the Ag CMS page, but on that page there will be a click here for the PDF. Isn't that the way we decided? On the, on the individual page there will be a, yes, mm -hmm. the, yes, yes. And for any of you who have been around for a while, that's exactly what we used to do in HTML back in the days when we had to code it in. So we quit doing HTML. Now with smartphones and tablets, we need to go back and add the HTML. So any questions about that process? We might be able to show you the difference between what one of our landing pages is and oh. and what the, the digital one looks like um, just on our publications listing. 
okay. we have some different ones. I'm going to share my desktop again. If anybody's really interested in that. Well, we were going to go to that page yeah. anyway, yeah. so we'll just do Maybe it. Maybe am I rushing things? Nope. Nope. Okay. You're good. Yeah, there we want to go. So the easiest way probably to get to the publications webpage, I assume a lot of you might even have your homepage set as the extension homepage or your office or department or county or whatever. But from the extension homepage, there is a link directly to publications. Okay, yeah, one place we call them educational materials. Here we call them publications, but you know what it is. So click on publications and... Right. And then if you will click... Uh, uh, Becky, on the beginning, uh, Bright Beginnings 1, Preparing for Parenthood, then that is our new digital setup. So right in the right-hand corner, upper corner, there is a uh, download the PDF. So there you can get the PDF, but here it has all of that uh, information for the digital. So if you pulled this up on your smartphone, it would look a lot better than if you just clicked on the PDF. Right, right. Make sense? And it really doesn't, to me, it really doesn't make, uh, I mean, it looks different, but it doesn't look a lot different. Well, it does, too. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that, but well, yeah. Uh, so. To be honest, we probably need to make photos smaller than that. Mm -hmm. Because if you looked at this on your phone, yep. that photo would take up yep. a lot. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're trying to work out all these little things. We're still, try, there's a lot of obstacles we haven't overcome yet. So, but we are working on them, and there's some really good ones that are, are making a, you know, it's working and it's coming. Just some little tweaks in there. So, so if any of you see a web page like this that you can tell is not a landing page, uh, where's the landing page? If you want to just back, okay, so then uh, talking to your children about sexual abuse. Now you can see there's an icon or a little uh, thumbnail there which will show the publication. That kind of is what the old ones are like. So there you have the old landing page. So in, so you have the PDF on the bottom under the, the links with the full PDF view, uh, view full publication. There's where the PDF is. But there we only have the PDF. Right, right. So that's one that's on the list to do. And it might be it just hasn't been switched over to, to uh, I, I think maybe it's been done. It just hasn't been switched over to where it's on the digital list yet or folder or where it's. Okay. So they're all coming along, but it is taking time. So. And while we're on the publications page, probably everybody knows how we categorize the publications. We have a consistent list now that we're doing the digital version. In the past, it was just kind of tagged with whatever words Sharon came up with. Right, yeah. <laughs> and some things would show up some really weird places, like nutrient. It would show up under food, and it would show up under manure. So that was a perfect example of where it didn't quite work. So with the new digital project, we have consistent tags, and they'll be cataloged in this consistent way, and it will be easier to find some things and make sure the right things are grouped together. So that, I think, also is a right, big right. step in the right direction. Right. Okay, I think that's all the web we want to show so. people. Yep. Okay, I believe so. Let's go back to stop presenting. Any questions about that digital project? No? We are struggling with the ones that are really big publications. I do. You know, so we're working on those and, and also the ones that if it's a uh, free publication or whether it's not a free publication, we're still we're still trying to figure out how to do those. But it's coming along, and hopefully sooner rather than later, it'll be done. And mm -hmm. We'll have it done. So, super. So that kind of brings us to what if I'm either updating a publication or writing a new publication. Writing for the web is different than writing for print. And so we would be glad to work with you and, and just provide some little tips on how your information might look better or read better or show up in search engines better by just some tweaking. However, even in the printed version, the PDFs, we are encouraging you to always 
as we have for years and years, write with short sentences, short paragraphs, bullet lists, subheads, things like that. That also goes for the web world. But there are some tricks about how to use keywords multiple times and even early in the sentence and in the subheads themselves. So we need to start thinking, as Bob says, digital first rather than PDF or print first. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a transition for a lot of us, <laughs> but we do need to start thinking more digitally. So we'd be glad to work with you as you're either editing publications or starting new publications to right. try to work toward that. We've covered everything we wanted to I think, talk about. I think so. So what questions do you have? anything at all, do you recommend that we still keep paper copies on file in our county offices? Number one, I would say I have never recommended that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your choice. Granted, I'm the disaster person too, and when the power's off, yeah, you're in trouble. Uh, but I personally don't print much. I prefer to go to the web and make sure I have the most up to date. We no longer, correct me, Sharon, but we no longer send out one copy of every new publication right, to the county. Right, that's counties. correct, that's correct. The authors are responsible for letting you know there even is a new publication. And then we try to get it into Let's Communicate, and there again that mm -hmm doesn't always happen, but we try to get it in there. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it gets in there. It may not be immediate, but you get it in there. <laughs> true, true. We kind yeah. of batch them. Yes. So, you know, our fear, and I know Deb Gebicki especially has done a good job of communicating to the offices that we really don't want you keeping old stuff because it's too tempting to just make somebody mm -hmm. a copy and give them wrong information. Right. So, yeah. So Amy says, I found some really old publications that were, okay, that is exactly what we just found. No, do not archive online. In fact, we've had some go-arounds with the library because we're an official state repository and Sharon has to send eight copies of every publication to the state library and then they divvy them out to NDSU and UND and I don't mm -hmm. know where all else. There's eight different locations. And so some of our, well, not some, all of our old publications mm -hmm. are on an NDSU website, but listed as archives. And people find that, and that mm -hmm. scares the heck out of us. Mm -hmm. If they follow some wrong herbicide or canning recommendations. And they don't replace either. So they'll run, the, you know, every time it's revised, they will put that one along with it. So you do have to make sure that it's the latest one, but we have no control over the archives. And like Becky said, sometimes you, you in a search you can find it. Um, so, But if you start. find it through a search on an ag site, or if it has ag in the name, in the URL, let us know. Those are the ones we're trying to get rid of in this right. folder we discovered. Right. But if you see it anywhere else, please, please, please let us know. Anything older than five years should be disposed of. I would say yes, some of the authors would argue with that. Our policy now is the distribution center will not be responsible for distributing anything older than five years, and that came from the program leaders. That was not our decision, although I support it wholeheartedly. Um, but if the author insists, we will give them the publications if there are any left that right. are more than five years old, and they're responsible from there. And occasionally you may see now, especially with the crunch on the budgets, you may see where some publications are going to be treated with a little sticker or something putting in the new date on it. So the same information is just that they've just remedied it, remedied it with a uh, sticker updating it. You're right, Carl. We talked about the authors letting staff know. Uh, an email blast and through your program team, well, program team, for example, wouldn't hit all A&R agents. So yes, if you put it in ranch hand, in your example, maybe, to let both the public and the agents know, or just an email to the A&R agents or something like that. But yes, we need to all do a better job of marketing that information. I got an email yesterday that said, 
you know, we shouldn't be pitching these things. Well, he didn't quite understand what was going on. Uh, but it is good information. It's like, yeah, we need to get it out there even better. So we're asking the authors to help us make sure the information is getting out to targeted audiences, not just our own agents, but uh, again, I'm picking on Carl, <laughs> but you might send an email to the Stockman's Association and say, hey, just want your members mm -hmm. to know we have some new information available. And Julie would probably share it with their members somehow. Or probably visit with one of our editors to do a news release. Maybe so. so. I'll, I'll admit, we, we do that, but I don't want the lead to be, we have a new publication. Mm -hmm. The lead should be, here's the information we have, and if you want the whole report, it's in the publication. Sure. Yeah. So, so I agree with Sharon. It's just how we approach that. So answered that question. We're going to go back up to Don's. Or did I answer your questions okay, Amy? And, and I guess it was whoever. Okay, Don asked about 4-H publications. Distribution Center doesn't have anything to do with those. No, we we maintain the copies that are on our shelves, but as far as the, the PDFs or anything like that, that is all taken care of over in the 4-H office. So I'm afraid I can't help you on that. See, there's nobody on from the 4-H. Holly is the main contact for that, though. Right? I would guess so, yes. Okay. We think. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. I have a son that needs to go to the doctor. So. Bye. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Greatly Thank you. appreciate all your information. And can we still order printed publications? If yeah. absolutely, if someone has paid to have them printed, program leaders have been doing that quite a bit. Some grants have paid for the fancier publications. I will warn you, with the budget situation, they're probably, in, well, in fact, already, we've been cutting way, way back on the number of printed publications. So I know the program leaders, who often pay for the printing, would ask you to use those pubs as judiciously as you possibly can. Uh, if you see them laying around, don't throw them away, recycle them, <laughs> try to use them. And, and I trust that in the counties you're all doing that. but. Yes, you can still order them if they're available. Uh, we don't want, in fact, Sharon was telling me about that new Be Beautiful or whatever. 500 copies were printed. Esther got 100. Jan got 100. We're already down to 300. She asked me, what do I do if a county orders 100 copies? And I said, well, we'll have to visit with them and say, you know, what are you using these for? Do you really need 100? We have to share and share alike. It's not just, hey, quick, grab them before they're gone. We want to be as efficient as we possibly can. Make sense, Cindy? Old ag mags. Oh, Carmen, thank you. Um, those stay on the web. They're not a numbered extension publication. In fact, I don't know who officially owns the copyright. We do it under contract with the Department of Ag. If you all just search AgMag or go to ag.ndsu.edu slash AgMag, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, those we leave up until the next time that topic, we just start at the bottom and update that one. Well, I guess my action is wrong. So there may be some old information there but we only update them in the order as they age out from the bottom up. Do most county offices have budgets for printing extension pubs agents pull up for walk-in clientele? I obviously can't answer that. I don't know what the situation is in your county offices, if you even have decent printers for the nice color publications. So if some of you want to share that in the chat, feel free. Uh, how much would it cost to order a hundred of something? If there is a, co okay, they're free usually to county offices. If somebody just contacts Sharon and Distribution, then they have to pay. This is a good example of how we want our customers to work through their county office. So most, the vast majority, in fact, of publications are free to county extension offices for you to distribute. That's why we just ask you to only request how many you actually are confident you'll use. There's an example of where Dawn can print her own. Did I miss a question? 
so much available for printing, but then that's it. Yeah. Um, okay. So what other questions do you have? We've covered everything I wanted to cover. And that's been a lot. We did cover a lot in this time. Any last questions? Well, Sharon obviously is available. I'm available for the more big picture questions. She's the pro at the specifics. Well, Carl, that's been discussed and basically it's passing the buck. So it's not just the ability, it's the cost. Counties are often in tough financial situations just like the state level is. So um, we wanna make sure we're not just passing the buck. Pre-approval for a new publication. It depends. Um, if, if it's a state specialist working on something and it needs to be printed by your program leader's operating budget, I would suggest you maybe talk with that program leader ahead of time if you haven't been giving, given a specific budget for printing. Uh, can you give me an example? There we go. Let's say I want to make it to, oh, okay, a pamphlet is totally different. We're talking about the numbered, I should have said that at the very beginning. We're talking about the numbered educational publications. And the world outside of extension doesn't know what the heck we mean when we say numbered publication. But to us, that means it's gone through a critical review process. Any staff person, any office can do a brochure, a newsletter, a flyer, stuff like that, even their own little educational material. But when we say numbered publications, those are things that have gone through the critical review process. A department head or somebody like that has signed off on it that yes, this is accurate information we want out there representing the NDSU Extension Service. So you all are welcome. We use, didn't think about this topic. We use a Creative Commons copyright license, which means, and if you click on it at the bottom of our website or go to the URL on our publications, that means we give anybody in the world permission to use information from our publications and our websites and everything else as long as they give credit and they don't make money off of it. Those are the two biggies. So attribution, so Claire, if you want to kind of do a mini version of something Andrew Thostetson wrote, please give him credit. Usually we just say NDSU Extension Service, but in the state I would suggest you also add a little more credibility by giving Andrew some credit. Uh, so no, you do not need permission for that. Don't even bother me with that. That's partly why we went to Creative Commons. It's like, yeah, we told everybody, yeah, use it, just give credit. So that's what the Creative Commons license is. And they can't make money off of it. If somebody reproduces our publication, pretty much the whole thing, and they try to sell it, we don't like that. Um, if they just use a little part of it, which I'm not going to turn this into a copyright session, but under the fair use guidelines, which if you'll go to an ag web page and just search for fair use guidelines, you'll learn about that then, you know, no problem. We let even people who are writing books that they're going to sell use a graphic or use a photo or use a little bit of information. So you would like to do a numbered publication. Do I need to check with the department head to see if that would be supported? I would say work through your program team, first of all. If you're on the animal health team and you have a publication you think we're missing, there's a gap here, you want to provide a numbered publication on this topic, I would say work first with your program team. I don't, or I don't know about department head, maybe program leader, Charlie, Deb, Brad, or Lynette. Probably not the department head, your program team first. Okay, super. And we have had county staff author publications too. Don't think that's just state specialists. Some of our very popular ones, uh, Nels Peterson's been gone for years, but he authored a publication. Brad Brumman has. 
And of course, I can't think of any more right now, but I know there are more. Any last questions before we wrap up? If you do have not just questions, but concerns or thoughts about the process or anything like that, please email or call either Sharon or me, and we'd be glad to help you. So thank you so very much for joining this webinar today. We hope it was useful. It looks like some of you think it was. It's something we take for granted here in AgCom, so it was like, duh, we probably should be better communicators as the Ag Communication Department and share this. The recording will be up on the AgCom homepage. I won't guarantee when, since I'm gonna be out of the office for a while and it's recorded under my name, but we'll get that up because uh, you might wanna review it again or share it with some other folks. So thank you very much for joining us today. Please join our next AgCom webinar, which will be the third Wednesday in August. We don't know exactly what the topic will be yet. We've got a couple ideas right now, but I hope these are useful and thank you very much for joining us today. Bye.